Welcome to the Mid-Year Market Report. I'm Justin Miller with the Chong Miller Group. At the Chong Miller Group, we help people build wealth through real estate. We help people buy and sell homes, including condos and townhomes here in the Las Vegas Valley. So this is the July market update, July 2023 for condos and townhomes. Now, let me start with a small apology. I was not able to get the June update published as a video this past month. Please, if you're, uh, if you're waiting for these videos, you can always email me at justin at Chong Miller Group. The email shows uh, on the uh, comment information. It also shows at the very end on the end screen for the video. Uh, but you can email me and ask to be put on our newsletter. In the newsletter, which comes out every month, uh, if there's a problem in, with any of the videos, I try to comment about and make comparative uh, statements uh, in the newsletter. So that's a way that you can get sort of a backup uh, source. Okay, having said that, please, if you like the videos, subscribe, hit the notification bell, uh, smash the like button, and let's go ahead and jump right in. So July 2023, that means we're looking at data for June of 2023, month over month comparison, June back to May, and year over year comparison, June 2023 to June 2022. Now let me caution, remember annual comparisons, I've been saying all year, are going to look really strange because last year at the beginning of the year, the first half, prices, uh, sales activity, uh, inventory builds, these were all going up dramatically last year. Dramatically is an overstatement, but they were going up really significantly last year. And then they started coming back down in the second half of last year. Uh, overall, we saw declining prices in sort of the 12, 12 and a half, 13 percent range. Uh, from the peak in May of 2022 through the bottom of the market in February of 2023. So that meant the year over year comparisons from the beginning of 2023, looking back at really strong early 2022, difficult. We'll start to see a real shift in that from this video forward with these market updates because the second half of 2022 was quite weak, and I expect that we'll be doing quite well in the second half of 2023. So I make that comment here just to make sure you're taking annual comparisons, whether they're coming from me or coming from people who are trying to hype something really bad about the market, if they find it, uh, or if they make it up. Uh, annual comparisons are usually good, important, because they take out seasonality, but this year they're really challenging because of what last year looked like. Okay, so let's turn our attention to condos. What happened in the condo market here in the Las Vegas Valley? And this is resale condos uh, from June of 2023. Condo price, uh, $226,000. Now this is interesting because it's actually down $1,000 from what we saw in May from 227. So that's down 0.4%. Uh, because I did not have this video out last month, you would see this as being slightly divergent, of course, because we don't have last month's numbers. You're kind of getting last month's numbers now. Um, Okay, this is also down from uh, $245,000 $245, in June of last year. Uh, that's down 7.8%. Now, prices had peaked only one month earlier last year, uh, and we came down fairly significantly on the condo space uh, in June of last year. So we are down actually annually, so 12 month, 7.8% in the condo space. Now this is interesting and I wanna contrast it just for a second to where we are in the single family home space where the annual price drop, the 12 month price drop was 7.9%. And what that means is while we've seen differences across months, if we take June of 2023 and we look over a one year period retrospectively back to June of 2022, We've actually seen very similar market dynamics overall between condos and single family homes. I want to point that out specifically because when we were seeing real challenges with the pandemic, the, the housing market during the pandemic, we saw 
condos and townhomes as well, both sectors of the multifamily housing uh, segment, moving down significantly in terms of sales volume and price relative to single family homes. We saw that because multifamily living became more problematic. We're not seeing that now. What we're seeing actually is the different sectors of the market are behaving in ways that are approximately equal. Now, that's not to minimize looking at the specific sectors because clearly these are different populations of housing types. And so we want to make sure that we're paying attention to the differences that exist as well. Uh, but it is interesting, 12 month price drop uh, for single family homes, 7.9%, for condos, 7.8%. Um, okay, what about units sold? How did the market behave during the month of June? We saw 333 condos sold. That is down, it's down 4.6% from the 349. Uh, it's down 16 condos from what we saw in, uh, in May of 2023. It's also down from where we were last year in June. Remember, again, the, my caution with regard to the annual comparisons, in May, we sort of peaked. In June, we're starting to come down, but then we start falling further. We're down 4.3% from the four, 347 condos that sold in June of last year. If we keep up the sales pace this year, we'll start seeing positive growth actually in size of market with the July numbers. So it'd be kind of uh, interesting. Now, there's another way to look at this, and that is the number of pending contracts. And so over the past couple of months, I've started talking about number of pendings in the multifamily housing space. Uh, and so that's new information that I had not been previously including. Uh, 382 pending contracts. That means a contract that came into existence, escrow opened. 382 in June of 2023. That is actually up 11.0% from the 344 that entered contract uh, in May. It's actually down though, it's down annually, down 17.3% from the 462 contracts that were written in June of 2022. Now, uh, there's something that's interesting that's happening here. The number of contracts that are written are highly indicative of demand in the market. And so we actually saw greater contract writing in June than what we saw for closed sales. 333 closed, 382 contracts opened. Now, that's important because as we're thinking about demand, we know demand has been, has been hit significantly because of higher interest rates. Well, if we think about the way contracts get written and sales take place, we have a, a listing that perhaps took place in April, a contract that got written in May and a closing that happened in June. So the pending contracts that opened in June, that means those properties uh, were put onto the market in May and they should close probably in July. Well, what that means is that these pending numbers are actually a little stronger than what they might otherwise imply because these pending numbers were taking place, these contracts were being opened as interest rates were going back up from about 6.6% uh, .6 up to about 6.8% uh, late in the month of May in the early month, part of the month of June. So even with interest rates going up a little bit further, we still had really good pending numbers, contracts opened. And that's, that's suggestive of good sales looking forward through the third quarter of this year. And as I had been predicting, actually, and you can go back and look at the forecast video for 2023, which I issued in November of last year, I'd been suggesting the first quarter was probably going to be a weak quarter. The second quarter was going to be putting in the base for a new, uh, a new cycle. 
and that in the third and fourth quarter, the market would behaving quite would be behaving quite strongly. Well, actually, I mistimed that by about a month. Uh, we started putting in that bottom in February, so the middle of Q1. And Q2, which ended at the end of June, has actually been pretty good. And so we've we've taken away, we've closed some of that pricing gap from the downside in the last cycle. We've closed a significant amount of the sales gap as well. And so we've, I think we've finished stabilizing the market right now, and now we're going to be going higher. Uh, now, demand looks through pendings and closed because you don't get a, a contract and you certainly don't get a closing unless there's demand in the market. You need more than just supply. But we also have to have supply in the market, right? So we've, we've looked at the demand numbers effectively. The supply numbers are inventory and then also new listings. So inventory, where do we stand? 579 condos for sale at the end of June 2023. That's down 16.8% from the 696 condos listed for sale at the end of May. That's a really significant drop. And in fact, this is a continuation of a very strong decline in inventory that we've seen over the past nine months. Uh, we are down 42.7% from the 1,011 condos that were listed for sale at the end of June in 2022. So inventory has just been plummeting. That's supply of condos for sale has been plummeting. And we've seen similar taking place in the single family home and in the townhome space. We'll get to townhomes in a couple minutes. But very important to note here is we've just been seeing inventory being depleted. It's being eaten up by good sales. Some people still letting their, their listings expire or uh, they withdraw them from the market affirmatively. Uh, but, but we are looking at being inventory actually 579. We're about half of, of in, historically normal inventory in this market. Right. So not necessarily balanced because historically we've not necessarily been balanced in this market. We've actually had we've had a, a shortage of supply for for most of the past 10 years. But the last 10 years, the normal, the the average uh, number of of condos in the market for sale has been close to a thousand and we're below 600. Very significant inventory problems starting to materialize here in the market. Well, what about newly listed for sale condos, uh, resale condos? Uh, because this is the way we get new inventory into the market. Um, 388 in June of 2023, that is down 1.5% uh, from 394 in uh, May of this year. It is down 47.7% from 742 newly listed in June of 2023. Now remember, uh, I'm sorry, June of 2022. Remember last year, we were seeing these, all these new listings, we were seeing some build in inventory, which a lot of commentators were saying was really, really bad and was going to drive prices into collapse and et cetera. Prices didn't collapse and actually we needed to build inventory because we were so low. Well, we're back to that really low inventory problem. When we've got demand as shown in pending contracts and closed sales, if we don't have inventory for the buyers to look at and put offers on, then buyers are going to be competing more strongly with each other, which causes pricing to go up. There's just new, no two ways about that. So this, this inventory problem is real and the lack of new listings is real. Uh, by the way, new listings are usually seasonally strongest in March and April. This year, March and April were no help whatsoever in getting new listings into the market. I had thought new listings would be helpful um, in May and June. And actually we've seen new listings that are kind of flat in May and June. So we're not getting additional help now. We're going into the third quarter with a lack of inventory 
and likely a lack of newly listed resale condos uh, really coming into the market, not enough to build inventory. So we'll be depleting inventory further from here. Um, I note that to you because if, you're, if you've got a condo and you're thinking about selling or thinking about maybe selling or want to know what your options may be about selling, please reach out to us. And if you're a, a buyer and you're thinking about buying a condo, know the market's really tight. It is a seller's market right now uh, in some regards, and therefore you need an agent who can represent you to find and get into contract on those condos. It's really significant. Um, please make sure you're getting professional help. Now, one other comment about condos, and that is back on market, which I've been reporting for the past couple years, uh, 159 of the contracts that had been written uh, previously were canceled. They dropped out. Uh, that represents 32.2% of the condo contracts that were open failing. That's really elevated. Normal is 10 to 15%. Uh, this is actually up a little bit from what we were seeing in May when that number was 29.8%. Now, uh, I will caution you, there are of course multiple reasons why contracts may fail, but the biggest reason right now are bad appraisals. And the bad appraisals, when they when an appraisal comes in low, a buyer may initially think, oh, that's great, I'll save money. But actually, a seller may not be able to or may not be willing to accommodate the low appraisal. And the buyer may not be able to come up with enough cash to close that gap. And so buyer and seller's contract collapses. Buyer has to start looking all over again. Even though they had found something they liked so much, they put an offer in on it and got that accepted. A seller needs to start looking for a new buyer all over again. Bad appraisals are bad. They hurt everybody. The only potential beneficiary of a bad appraisal is a bank. And so don't ever hope for a low appraisal. And what we're seeing right now is as the market prices are going higher, appraisers are resisting that and they are writing appraisals at prices that may have been appropriate a couple of months prior. They're not writing appraisals at what the market is actually deeming to be the appropriate price at the current time. And so it's putting, it's putting problematic appraisals into, into those contracts and it's leading to these higher volumes of failures. Watch out for it. Make sure you have an agent who can help you uh, prepare for an appraisal problem, whether you're a buyer or a seller, and can help you nego to negotiate around an appraisal problem, whether you're a buyer or a seller. Okay, so that's condos. Let's turn our attention to townhomes. But first, please, again, subscribe, smash the like button, hit the notification bell, and please feel free to share these videos with your neighbors, friends, colleagues, anyone you know who may benefit from the information, who may be thinking about uh, needing to buy, needing to sell, uh, or just curious about what their options are. Please put them in touch with us, share the videos with them. Okay, townhomes. So, the reason that I create, just as a short introduction uh, here, the reason I create the, the condo and townhome video is because they're distinctive segments of the Las Vegas real estate market. They're not the same as single family homes for a, a wide variety of reasons. And to try to combine these with single family homes creates the real estate market, but it's sort of like just talking about a basket of fruit instead of talking about apples and oranges. Talking about the basket of fruit may be perfectly fine sometimes, but if you're looking for apples, you don't want to know what's going on with the price of bananas or coconuts or oranges. You want to know what's going on with apples. If you're thinking about selling apples, you don't really care what's taking place in um, in the strawberry market. It doesn't really matter to you, right? So we want to make sure we're comparing like things. Well, similarly, condos and townhomes are both multifamily housing uh, product, but they are distinct product. And so they behave differently on a month to month basis. And, and by the way, another distinguishing factor between townhomes, condos, and single family homes, just to make it clear, one of the reasons it's really important to separate condos and townhomes from single family is because of the size, the relative size of the market segments. 
uh, there were 2,085 sold single-family homes uh, in June, but there were 333 sold condos. So that is less than 15% of the aggregate market were condos. Well, it's even more pronounced for townhomes. 261 townhomes sold in June of 2023. Uh, so that would be less than uh, approximately 10% of the overall combined market would be townhomes. So if we just bury that into housing, you're not gonna actually see what's taking place in the townhome market. It'll be buried in all of the other numbers. Similarly, if we combine townhomes and condos, the condo space is sort of overwhelming to the townhome space and we'll end up with a misidentification of which act what's actually taking place. And that's why I, se I segregate uh, the single family from the multifamily, but it's why within the multifamily, I do both condos and townhomes separately. It leads to a much more accurate understanding of what's going on in the marketplace it leads to actually a much more stable and valid statistical uh, set of statements. So townhomes, median sale price for townhomes in, um, in June of 2023, $327,000. That's up. Remember condos had actually come down $1,000 to 226. Townhome prices went up. They went up to 327. They went up $7,000 from 320. That's up 2.2%. That's actually the highest price since June of last year, since June of 2022. Now, interestingly, in June of 2022, we had just dropped from the month prior off that peak price. Uh, we had dropped from 353 actually at that peak down to 345. So we are down 5.2%. Over the past 12 months, June 2022 to June 2023, uh, interestingly, that 5.2% drop compares to a 7.8% drop for condos and a 7.9% drop for single family homes. That suggests that townhomes are actually holding up better. And in fact, we've seen this interesting pricing dynamic on townhomes over the past year. So May, when they peaked, at, um, at 353, they dropped in June to 345, and they dropped in uh, July to about 325. And we've been maintaining this sort of flat pricing model in the townhome space uh, really for 10 months now. Uh, and that was divergent from condos, which were going down as well as single family homes, which were going down all the way through February of 2023, and have now rebounded back up. I expect we'll see better rebound from here forward in the uh, townhome space, but we were up 2.2% or $7,000 from uh, where we were in May. So 261 uh, townhomes sold in June. That is, um, that is flat from the 261 that sold in May of 2023, so exactly the same number. Um, this, by the way, is above the normal sales volume for townhomes for the period of time 2008 through 2020, right? So if we wanna make comparisons across time, we can look over a longer time series, or we could look kind of on an annual basis the problem with the annual basis is we're looking to 2022 numbers, which are, which are weird. So we are down 16.2% uh, on that annual comparison from 313 townhomes. But that was a really strong number that we saw last June. And then we started coming down uh, from that. So the annual comparison is, uh, is not so fantastic. Um, interestingly, we are on a volume basis up 85.2% from the cycle low. So last year, as we were seeing sales come down and prices come down, the townhome market really got tiny. We are 85.2% we are greater in terms of transaction volume than the, than the anemic numbers that we're seeing in the second half of last year. Now, pending 
how did that demand number look? Uh, 267 in June of 2023. That's up 5.1% from the 254 uh, pending contracts that we saw in May. Uh, so that's great. So we're seeing demand there on an annual basis, uh, annual comparison. We're up 3.9% from the 313 that we saw go into contract in June of last year. So again, those annual numbers, we're going to start to see uh, uh, very favorable annual comparisons going forward from here. Um, and we're already up on uh, pending contracts, even though we're down on sales volume. That's going to flip in, uh, in July. Now, again, we have a volume, a, a volume issue in terms of demand. We have a volume issue in terms of supply. What does supply look like or inventory of for sale townhomes in the Las Vegas Valley? 413 at the end of June 2023. It's down 11.9% from the 469 that were available for purchase at the end of May. Again, like in condos, a very strong seven-month downtrend in, uh, in units listed for sale, resale townhomes. Uh, interestingly, uh, condos and townhomes, both inventory have been really coming down strongly for nine months. In the single-family home space, that inventory has been coming down really strongly for seven months. We, uh, we sort of rolled over the top instead of dropping sharply off the top. Uh, in the single family home space. So the the drop has been nine months in single family, but the significant strong drops has only been seven months. We are down 37.4% from the number of townhomes listed for sale at the end of June, 2022, 660. We're sitting at about 45% of uh, normal inventory for the townhome space. If we take normal as being the aggregate period, 2009 through 2020, um, so this is this is really significant. We've got very few, relatively speaking, townhomes available for sale. So again, we like to see new inventory coming in. That's newly listed resale townhomes, uh, 304. Now this is actually up. That's great news. It's up four townhomes from what were listed at the end of May uh, when we were at 300. We're up 1.3%. The townhome space is so small that each townhome is approximately a, a one-third of 1%. So we're up four townhomes or 1.3%, um, way below market. Uh, and in fact, uh, if we think about this in sort of a monthly indicator, we're at 2.0 months worth of supply on townhomes. So I've been predicting again back in November that we'd be depleting this inventory uh, this year. And over the past couple of months, I started saying that by June, we would be looking at 2.0 months worth of inventory, which considered a balanced market in Las Vegas between five and six months. We're sitting below that. We're, we're sitting, any way we look at it, between 40 and 45 percent of normal inventory as well as uh, new listings. We are down 39.9 percent from the 506 new listings that we saw in June of 2022. So we're not getting new listings into inventory that are helping us with these supply numbers. Supply remains really, really constrained. And that's going to continue to be the case going forward. And that's going to be pushing prices higher. Uh, now, obviously, interest rates do have an impact because at some point people start resisting the higher interest rates and they pull back from the market a little bit. But what we're seeing actually over the past three months is every time interest rates come down even a little, we start to see a spurt of activity. As interest rates bounce higher, we start to see uh, a small reduction in, in activity. So what that suggests is we're sitting close to a border of where uh, interest rates are problematic. Certainly interest rates are much, much higher than they were in 2021 or even last year. Uh, at this time, we're over a full percent higher, but we're, we're not in that space right now where people are resisting because of interest rates. We're kind of sitting right at that cusp. 
Um, we're sitting at about 6.8% on the 30 year fixed rate mortgage right now. And as we go above that, it starts to slow the market. As we come down from that, it starts to accelerate the market. Now that line probably will trend a little higher over time and we'll probably find ourselves bumping up against and having challenges, not at 6.8, but rather at 7.0%. But I do believe that mortgage interest rates will be coming down some. And you can see the single family home video um, for some information about that and why I think that's gonna be the case. Uh, so uh, one other uh, thing I wanna mention, the back on market, 106 townhomes came back on market in June, a failed escrow. That is 28.9% of contracts. Now that's actually down a little bit in the townhome space, down from 30.4% of contracts that failed in May. Uh, that is uh, definitely not a good number, but at least it's a little bit lower. Again, normal is between 10 and 15%. There's always contracts that fail. Um, there are lots of reasons contracts fail. These contracts are failing at very high numbers because of primarily appraisal problems. So make sure the agent you're working with knows how to deal with appraisals, knows how to uh, negotiate around appraisal problems if those appraisal problems actually materialize within your contract. At the Chong Miller Group, we've proven to be pretty successful at that. Um, helping people understand where the problems may exist to begin with around an appraisal, helping problems uh, to dematerialize and helping to negotiate around the, the problems that do actually crop up. Um, okay, so I am Justin Miller with the Chong Miller Group. If you're a seller, please, please, please reach out to us. We need more to sell. If you're a buyer, please feel free also to reach out to us. We're really successful at helping our buyer clients get into contract and close on those on those uh, on those contracts and get you into your new condo or your new townhome. Thank you very much. I will see you in the next video.